Uh, Dean Baxendale, let me understand from you, you know, a larger understanding of this entire uh, strategy of Justin Trudeau of this repeated action against India and repeated words against India has been the fact uh, that he is, his popularity within Canada has reduced, he's catering to a certain vote bank and that vote bank happens to be Khalistani elements or Khalistani inclined people. Uh, now, we know that Jagmeet Singh has withdrawn from his government and when the likes of Jagmeet Singh, who are Khalistan inclined, who have a separatist ideology, are withdrawing from the Justin Trudeau government, saying that he's not fulfilled his promises and that he's not popular, what does it say about the kind of impact that Justin Trudeau was hoping that this anti-India stance would make? Well, that's a very complex question. First of all, Jagmeet Singh, while he may have withdrawn officially his support for the government, uh, continues not to want to try to bring down this government. So let's uh, recognize that that's politics at play. I think, though, in terms of you know looking at this whole issue, you know, successive Canadian governments have done very little over the past two decades to negate terrorist factions, separatist factions that we've allowed to come mm. to Canada. And because of our free speech laws and very tolerant society, uh, we have allowed these groups uh, to entrench themselves, to raise funds, um, you know, uh, push out propaganda, uh, do fundraising for operations that are, you know, negatively affect, affect India, uh, Israel, uh, and other nations, and also be engaged in transnational repression inside our own, own country. So... These kinds of issues with respect to Trudeau, he has not taken on the threat from the PRC. Why? Because his government is very adjacent to Beijing. The Hogue Commission hearings on foreign interference are clearly hmm. pointing that out. And as a publisher on numerous books that demonstrate China's interest in Canada and buying politicians and influence in the government, uh, he is not negating that. At, at, I guess at this point, at the expense of India. However, let's not, you know, take away from the fact that there is uh, credible uh, evidence or information that suggests that India may well have had an interest in having Niger um, uh, uh, assassinated and removed. The fact that Canadian governments have done nothing to negate Dean, this threat inside our Dean, but where is that credible evidence? Is you know, as Ambassador Anil Trigunayat said that U.S. had some sort of evidence, so they provided it to the Indian government. In the Indian government has been asking for that evidence. Today, the Canadian Charge the Affairs is saying that we have given prov uh, credible and irrefutable evidence. What is that Correct. evidence? Why have you not shared it in the past more than one year? Who are you asking the question of? To you, Dean. In Dean, are you able to hear me? Sorry, who are you asking me the question? Yes, well, this is for you, Dean. Let me just say this. Okay. What took let me just so say long this. in sharing the credible evidence that Canada claims it has? Yeah. Okay. So listen, I think behind the scenes that, that there's been much information shared specifically with the Indian government. Uh, and discussions have certainly taken place at a diplomatic level. I think the reality is, is that, you know, uh, uh, India has chosen not to address this directly. From what I can read and what I can see of the situation, I believe that may well be the case. But I'm not in those discussions uh, or a party to them. Um, but I do think that uh, we need to have diplomacy done behind the scenes and actually uh, India needs to address this, and so does Canada, effectively behind the scenes in diplomatic channels.